Steve, congratulations on your most recent purchase of a robo job, retrofitting it onto a Doosan machine. Yep. Steve, why did you go for a robo job? Well, it, within Gibbs Gears, we've got four Doosan machines. Um, we could have gone with a Doosan robot, uh, but that would have been bespoke to the Doosan machine. And in the future, if you have different machines, or we'll use some other machines within the facility, then the robot, this, this robot we can retrofit on any machine. So it's flexible, versatile, and as I said, as we're a subcontract uh, company, um, we can use that for any component on any type of machine as the business changes. Well, being a subcontract machine shop, you need to be flexible. Correct. So what is it, not just about you know moving the robo job onto another machine, but what work is it that's coming in that you have a desire for this? Well, at the moment we make many, many uh, parts as it's produced at the moment, which is cylindrical parts. Uh, and there's a whole array of different parts. And because we're subcontracting some of the business, we're never quite sure what's going to come through the door from know. one month to six months down the road. And the versatility, flexibility is the key to, to this piece of equipment. So there's many machine shops out there, subcontract machine shops, that might be considering this. So what is it that you needed to consider when investing in a robo job? Okay, well, as I said earlier, we need versatility. This, this robot on this machine can produce anything. We need to run the machine for more hours. Um, we can run it after hours. Eventually, we want to be able to run it over weekends, lights out effective, effectively. That improves our efficiency and um, improves our capacity. And are there any hurdles that you have to kind of overcome? Because it's not just about having a machine and going, all right, let's put that robot there, that's done. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a couple of things that um, you need to understand with, with robots. One is obviously the space it takes up, the safety aspects. We need to look at the, the, the tool management, the swarf management, sister tooling in the machine. Um, to make the, the, the robot run consistently, because what you need to know is to have a control process that will run con constantly, consistently, with nobody stood in front of it checking every every part. And has it been easy for you to implement? Yeah, it's a bit of a learning curve, but it's really the, the, probably the biggest thing is the swarf management. You can't have lots and lots of stringy swarf. You need chips, uh, otherwise, you know, to keep the, the, the chuck and the, and the grippers of the robot clean and clear. If you have stringy swarf, it can be a real problem. And if off camera, you told me you're machining and manufacturing parts in a different way now. So explain yeah. to me, what, how is that? We're changing the, the technology um, a little bit with the types of carbide we use and the, the, the parameters around how that carbide's used to, to produce chips rather than springy swarf. You mentioned sister tooling as well. Yeah, yeah, because uh, if we're going to try and run the machine for uh, quite large batches with many hours of unmanned operation, the tool life of certain tools is limited. So we need to have uh, multiples of the same tool, sister tooling in the turrets. So after so many parts, it'll flick from tool A to tool B and carry on without having to have an operator or a, a setter to reprogram the machine. And how versatile is the robo job for you? Because I know that you've got different towers. It's very flexible as a yeah. system, isn't it's it? From size of component, it's, it's very flexible. You can stack parts. There's a whole array of things you can do. Uh, and it's flexible. It's, you know, we, we're just starting off with robots on turning. So our first delve, or the first step into the um, to the, that technology, and there's lots to learn. And, and this is a very flexible piece of kit. And training? Training that was all on site. Training was done here. Uh, the, the guys have picked it up fairly quickly, um, and, and, and they just want to keep it running now. So yeah. But you're not quite running yet to 24 no. hours. No. So why is that? Well, we've only had it a, a few weeks now, and yes. we've taken um, sort of baby steps, if you like. Yeah. It's, it's new technology to us. Some of the components we produce are aerospace, automotive, electric vehicle, as well as the general um, componentry we make. Some of them are very expensive. Yes. Very expensive materials, and you can't afford to have a problem. So you need to learn and make sure you've got the capability and the quality control all in place to make sure when, that's, when it's running and there's nobody on site, the parts coming off are to the correct quality. It's almost like you're in training now, ready yeah. for the marathon. Yeah. You're just going to, once you start going, you're just going to keep going yeah. with this. Absolutely, absolutely. So what would you recommend to anybody who's watching? What are the hurdles for yourself that you've managed to overcome um, in terms of if they're a subcontract machine shop and they're thinking, you know what, I need one of those. Well, the, the, the hurdles are really, you've got to define what you want to do with it. Which machine do you want to put it on? Uh, understand that how you're going to run it what tooling you're going to run, um, the floor space, as I've already said, safety issues. Um, it's really make sure you've got a complete picture of, of what you're trying to achieve. And any regrets at all? Not yet. No, not yet.